Hi, this is Ben Lindell from QMix.net, and you're watching Weak Sound. I'm going to be showing you how I use Beat Detective. You see the purple track at the top of our session? That's the backing track that the drummer was listening to when he cut the drums. Uh, let me play you a little bit of it. Now let me play what the drums sound like on top of that. You can definitely hear every once in a while there's flams, especially in the kick and snare. And that's really what I want to fix up. The way I like to use it, I just get the kick and snare lined up right on the grid and leave everything else just how it was. And that'll really keep a lot of the groove and the feel intact. To pull up Beat Detective, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, which on a Mac is Command 8 on the number pad. The first thing I need to do is create two edit groups for my drums, one for the kick and snare and one for the rest of my drums. So to do that, I'm going to select my kick and snare track and create a new group by pressing Command G, give it a name, Now I'm going to select the rest of my drums and do the same thing. Now that I have my edit groups made, I need to make a selection for where I want to work. So I'm going to select the kick and snare tracks. I'm going to come down to my Beat Detective window, make sure I'm on region separation, go over and do capture selection. What this does is it tells Beat Detective what area I want to work in. So as you can see, it changed the start bar to 67 and the end bar to 71, which is what I have selected up above. Now I'm going to press analyze and start adjusting the sensitivity. Now you can see there's lots of cool purple lines formed on my waveform. Each one of these lines represents is a place where Beat Detective is going to slice up my audio. So I really want to get these just on every snare drum hit and, you know, most of my kick drum hits as well. Something like that. Now, I don't need to just slice the kick and snare, I need to slice all of my drums together to maintain phase coherence. So to do that, I'm going to press Shift and then Semicolon to select the tracks below my kick and snare. Be really careful here, don't press the Analyze button. If you do that, it's going to reanalyze and slice up the audio based on all of the tracks. Now that we're ready to go, I'm going to press Separate, and Beat Detective is going to slice up my audio at each one of these purple markers. The next step is to quantize my regions. To do that, I'm going to select Region Conform in the Beat Detective window, and then I need to specify what grid I want it to be quantized to. He didn't play anything more than a 16th note, so that's going to be perfect for what we're doing. And then just press conform and it'll quantize your regions. All right, so that sounds pretty groovy, but I'm hearing lots of pops and clicks. Why is that? Well, when Beat Detective quantized my audio regions, it had to move things around and that created gaps and overlaps and just all sorts of really bad edits. Luckily, Beat Detective also has a tool to clean up after itself called Edit Smoothing. Back in my Beat Detective window, I'm going to select Edit Smoothing. And this only has a couple of options. It has fill gaps or fill and crossfade. Now fill gaps, all that does is it just puts in audio wherever Beat Detective made it blank space. Fill and crossfade does that, plus it also adds a crossfade to every single edit that it made. And the crossfade length, I usually just leave this at five milliseconds, it works fine for me. All right, I'm gonna press the smooth button. So now comes the most important step of working with Beat Detective listening to your work to make sure that it didn't mess anything up. So let's check it out. I'm going to go through and manually double check each fade that Beat Detective made and just check inside the fade to make sure that I'm not getting any added transients or I'm also not getting any transients being taken away. So here I am in my first Beat Detective edit. I'm going to zoom in vertically to see some more detail. To do that, I'm going to press Option, Command, Right Bracket, before I move to the next edit, there's two things I need to do. The first is I need to create a new edit group for all of my drums. Right now I just have a kick and snare group and a rest of the drums group. I'm going to be moving some of these fades around and I want to move all the drums together at the same time. So to do that, I'm going to select all the drums, press Command G to create a new group, and there we go. The second thing I need to do is turn off Tab to Transient. To do so, I'm going to press Command Option Tab. What this is going to allow me to do is press tab and jump from region to region and I can quickly check what's inside each fade. Alright, so let's start double checking these fades. Here's the first problem I see. Look at the hi-hat track. Looks like something may be getting cut off. Let me pull back the fade and see what's there. There we go. You can clearly see that the hi-hat transient was getting cut off by the beat detective edit. 
Now, with the hi-hat just a little bit in front of the kick, that's what's making the groove, the feel of the song come through. And I really want to make sure I keep all of those in here. Wink Sound is your source for free music and audio technology videos. Join the conversation by following Wink Sound on Twitter and YouTube to keep up with everything you need to know about music and audio technology.